mouth noises are disgusting to me. But I don't. But when they're intentional, like yeah, when yeah. someone's like slurping noodles, mm-hmm. I am like in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> no. Really? No. There was like a point in time. Hi, by the way. Welcome to <laughs> Circle Time. Hello. <laughs> I'm here with a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Peyton. I also have a podcast here at Dear Media. This is which true. Which is where we are right now. Call Note to Self. And that's me. <laughs> and here my she stick. is. <laughs> here I am. Um, Peyton and I, I was going to say we go way back, but we've actually only hung out once. But, I but feel it was like a long time ago. You. Yeah. And I feel like I already knew you. And we hung out for like a long time. Yes. Well, that's what happens when you start the day at Bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> it's two in the morning and you're like, well, I've made 35 new friends. Right. Like, Where remember, am I? <laughs> I talked about on another episode how I like will invite anyone and everyone to my house yes. like after I start drinking. Uh-huh. And like you fell victim to that. Oh, I was and ready you, to go. You came. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you go to my house? I'm like, yeah. I texted you to uh-huh. come on. And I, the last conversation was from like that day. Yes. <laughs> and the conversation is like us like exchanging phone numbers, me sending my address and her being like, I'm already on my way. <laughs> like I already got the address from someone it's else. It's been about four hours. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you were over until like 3 a.m. Yeah. And it was the best. Mm-hmm. I was there when the bed broke. The bed did break. Yeah, yeah. that's the one memory that I have. <laughs> yeah. One brief memory. You know, it's funny. I actually threw up that day. <laughs> oh, God. But right before the bed broke. Like, we went home from bungalow. Yes. I excused myself for a couple minutes. Got it out. Went and laid on the bed. Uh-huh. And then everyone thought I was just hanging. <laughs> so we were <laughs> so everybody all the bed. <laughs> came into the bed and laid on the bed. Yes. And then it literally and then it broke. And then it literally broke. And we had to sleep on the floor. Cody and I put the mattress on the floor and slept on the floor <laughs> oh, for a God. while. <laughs> okay. So, but like, needless to say, we got (laughs) to know each other pretty well. We did. We did. And now here we are talking about noodle ASMR. Ugh, y'all, I can't. I don't even care if it's on purpose. So Joe likes ASMR, my boyfriend. He thinks it's great. But like, I can't. I used to like literally hate my little sister for a full like six years of my life because she makes involuntary mouth noises. Okay, that is... Disgusting. Well, also, but it's involuntary. She can't I know. Herself. And I felt so bad because I'd always be like, Riley, I need you to go over there. Like, get away from me. And it like truly was like a issue in our relationship because I was so sensitive to the noises. That's so sad. So sad. I had to get over it. Obviously. So you don't like like a good crunch. Crunch is OK, but mouth. That's the mouth thing. OK, me. so maybe like tapping. See, that doesn't do anything for me. Uh, you just, it's the mouth noises. Oh, my God. I, it's just like the mouth. Yeah, like eating. Like, I just love watching videos what about of like people eat. Make out scenes. No, I don't like that. Okay. Different kind yeah. of mouth noises. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. When I hear like ma- kissing mouth yeah. noises, like if Ugh. it's like on The Bachelor, like Love Island is really and bad. You know what with they that. do? They do turn up those mics. They have to. Beyond. But no one wants to hear it. No one. I don't want to be close to it, I don't want to hear it. I don't know if I've ever met a single person, actually, who says they want to hear kissing mouth noises. No, because it's disgusting. Actually, you want to know something (laughs) so terrible. (laughs) Yes. One time, one of Cody's friends, this has, this scarred me. Okay. I think I bring it up every time. Like, he's a good friend. And I, and I think about it so often that I still bring it up. Uh He told, stop, I can't even believe I'm admitting this. (laughs) He told us that we were loud kissers. (laughs) That is mortifying. No. I oh, can't think about I'm it. Sweating. Like, no, me too. I feel like I'm, my face is turning red. <laughs> no, you're good. Like, he was like, "You guys are loud kissers. Like you like guys will can, just like kiss loudly, like in like, front of people from the other room." They're like, we don't us? like no. Okay, because that's what I asked, okay. and I was like, "What do you mean you like <laughs> are listening? What are you doing sitting by the door listening like, to us what make out? Happening? Like that's weird. <laughs> you're the weird one." But then he was like, "No, like if like Cody walks in the room, like uh-huh. he'll like and you guys like kiss or something." Yeah, yeah. He's like, it's like a loud kiss. <laughs> and I'm like, that's so embarrassing. I have to ask Joe if we are loud kissers. You don't know you are. Yeah. I think someone else has to tell you. Okay. Because like, I didn't think anything of it. Or if Cody like kissed my shoulder or uh-huh. something. Like nicely, <laughs> not like, <laughs> but, but like, apparently just like loud. gent, like tender. And I'm like, yeah. oh, so sweet. Kiss mm-hmm. my shoulder. But apparently it's a loud <laughs> smooch and not just like a tender little kiss. And ever since then, like Cody, will, like I, I'll see him like leaning into the arm and I'll be like, yeah. don't kiss me right now. I'm embarrassed. Everybody can yeah. hear. <laughs> And so it's kind of sad because oh, that I, is sad. I know that is sad. But it's it would be more sad if everyone was talking about us being loud kissers. Yeah, it would be. I've never noticed loud kissing in my day to day. Me either. I didn't all. think it was a thing. It's just it's just like Love Island. It's just Bachelor, Love Island and The Bachelor, but which I can't even watch anymore. So. I don't watch The Bachelor. I've never really watched The Bachelor. Oh, I used to. Really? I was a girl. Like every Monday. Well, so when it first came out, my mom 
it was like a thing at our house. Like me and my mom, and my sister would watch The Bachelor. That was like, oh, that's I was literally like 11 or something. Yeah. It's obviously different now. It's, it's just gotten like bad, right? It's just, it's not that it's bad. It's that it's boring and the drama is like, it's just so made up. Kind yeah, of. it's like scripted almost. Yeah. And now that I know that they're like sitting there and stuck for like six weeks in a mansion with no phones, like can't even read. No. Like that's weird. Insane. Yeah. They can't listen to music. They might be able to read, but they can't listen to music. But why? Because they want to make them like neurotic. That's why they that's act so, so crazy. terrible. And the only person they see outside of the people in the house is the guy. So I'm like, how is everyone obsessed with this guy? Because like usually I'm like, I wouldn't be obsessed with him. But then no. like it's because they literally don't have anyone else. Oh my God. I'm surprised like, do you think like any of the girls ever like hook up? Maybe. The house? I bet so. They probably do. Well, they have like a lot of alcohol going on. Yeah. They do want to get you drunk. I know that. I thought you're only, oh, wait, maybe that's Love Island where you're only allowed one or two glasses. And Bachelor in Paradise. I had a friend who did both. Okay. So she's like told me all the tea. She was like, Bachelor in Paradise, you can only you have, have a friend like two who went on. Oh, like a separate friend or the same friend? She went on Bachelor and then she went on Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, okay. I thought you meant yeah. she went on Bachelor in Paradise and she went on Love Island. No, no, no. I was like, that's fucking <laughs> no, insane. No. Okay. But Bachelor in Paradise, I think it's two drinks because you always can like go basically bang someone. Okay. But the Bachelor's like more set up to where like you're not going to go have sex. Okay. From what I, I know. Got it. But I've never done the show. Also, I'd be the worst contestant of The Bachelor literally ever. No, same. It'd be horrible. Like, I can't even imagine. I guess maybe I'd be able to. I like talk to myself pretty frequently. Same. It's like, maybe I'd be fine. I mean. I think I would like. They would catch that on the camera and then you would look insane. I mean, but we vlog. It's true. It's like the same thing. It is the same thing. (laughs) Except we're putting out ourselves. I know. Maybe it'd be better if someone else was catching us doing it. It'd be like cuter. It'd be funnier. (laughs) But I also don't think my humor would land at all. No, it's. No, I think yours would. I don't know. Really? I would just either be like, because I'm very dry sense of humor. So I feel like it would be like, she's a bitch. Oh, you might be the bitch. Yeah. Like, what a dick. Because I say, honestly, everything that's in my brain. Yeah, which is a good thing. Which is good for our job. I but, think it's good in general. But like, not when people can produce. Like, that's a producer's dream is when yeah. they can cut things They'd without They'd probably context. make you the villain. They would. But you'd be kind of sick. I wouldn't mind it. You'd be good at it. I-, I would be good at it. But I also hate being around that many people. Yeah. I wasn't, in a, I didn't like live in a sorority house or anything in college. Yeah. That would have been my actual nightmare. Okay. You I grew mean, up in Texas, right? Yeah. Where'd you Mostly. go to school? I went to Texas A&M for college. Right. Aggies. Big state school. Is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm a third generation there. So we're big Aggies. Oh my God. Yeah. Are you going to make your kids go there? No, 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 no. I want them to go to like Stanford. Or wherever they want. Or wherever they want. <laughs> Or Stanford. Or Stanford or Yale. <laughs> Somewhere good. I do think, though, Texas moving, A&M is good. I mean, I was lucky to go to school for free. Okay. So, and I was like, a, I was trying to like be comfortable because I had like moved a lot growing up with my dad in the military. Right. And I was like, okay, I want to go here. I know the school so well. I knew people going there. And now I wish I would have gone somewhere that would have pushed my boundaries a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Because academically, at least what, what I was studying, it wasn't insanely easy, but it wasn't also like that challenging. Right. But, but I feel like that's the only you can only look at that after and be mm-hmm. like, damn, I sh- that would have been. But like you're thinking of you like after the fact. Yes. That would have been able to handle it. But like mm-hmm. you then. I don't know. You know what I mean? Probably well, made the right decision for themselves. I was like craving the state school, big football school. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. And which I got is, it. Which is which in the moment, that's what you wanted. And you got it. Yeah. I mean, I was like cut to me shotgunning keystones and like wow. just chasing Bacardi with warm beer. Oh, that's tailgating. That's fun though. And mud. Like mm-hmm. genuinely had the craziest time. Yeah. Met my best friends. Yeah. So I'm happy about it, but I don't think I would want my kid. Well, one, I was talking to Joe about this the other day. Okay. I think we're moving away from the traditional college thing. Okay. Like I right. feel like once the time I have kids and they're like of that age, there's going to be more like a trade school vibe. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, it'll be different anyway. Okay. But I mean, ideally, everyone wants their kids like to go to Stanford or Yale or Vanderbilt or something. I you know? guess. Like you'd be like, oh, this is great for you. I think I would rather my kids find something that they really like uh-huh. and are like good at. Yeah. And just like do whatever that See, is. I didn't even find that until I was 21. So I was That's in college. That's the thing. You know? Yeah. Like sometimes you need. You need the experience. You need. Yeah. But I will say what I was doing because I started all of this on a blog like that's how I started 
doing really? stuff online. Yeah, like I wrote on a blog. What was it called? It was called Hustle and Halcyon. <laughs> okay. Okay. Chic. <laughs> Chic girl. <laughs> I started with a recipe for meatballs. It was like a healthy pasta dish. Okay. I don't have the website anymore, so I can't look at it. But it was truly like the photography heinous. Mm. No one ever <laughs> would want to have that fucking meatball recipe. You have to make it again. I it is it Can is you please horrible. Make it? I have to find it. It was just like Did I you just, make up the recipe? No. I found it and then tweaked it <laughs> okay. and did it like healthier. Right. Okay. And I did like the actual recipe because it started as like I was doing healthy recipes and like healthy lifestyle stuff. Okay. Very the skinny confidential, but like a little bit younger. I've always thought of her as like a little bit like my bigger sister in the okay. space. So I loved her blog at the time too. Yeah. So I just kind of like got in there and started like doing stuff. Got it. But in College Station, Texas, very weird yeah. behavior. People yeah. did not like anyone doing anything out of the norm. So I got shit on, shit on. Yeah. For like a year and a half. And then I came out here and I was living my best life. Yeah. So maybe that's why I'm like, I just like the California vibe because I feel like it would have been more accepted maybe. Right. <laughs> right. Well, College Station is an interesting place. It is interesting. It's very fun. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And also just like back then, mm-hmm. like doing a blog yes. or like doing stuff like that was like not heard of Mm -hmm. like now everyone is on tiktok and doing just stuff like that you know what i mean and so if you're like oh i'm like kind of an influencer now or like whatever it is people Mm -hmm. are like cool but like back then it was like not a thing what the fuck also i think where i'm from it's not cool to try so if you're trying like you're trying too hard oh you know yeah so everyone then shits on you and then i'm like well you have to try to do anything right so yeah i just had to like kind of get over it and get over myself i will say i started the blog in secret though Okay. And then one of my friends found it and she's genuinely the best person ever. And she like loved it. Okay. And she was like, oh my God, P, I'm so excited for you. P- post it on her Facebook because at that time Facebook was a thing. Oh my God. And I was so embarrassed. Like, oh my God. Genuinely well, so embarrassed. Scary. Yeah. I was like tr- in my own little like secret world. Right. Oh <laughs> and my God. And then everyone knew. So Exposed. I had to decide. Right. And I had to decide, do I want to do this now publicly and own this or do I want to pretend like it wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Be Someone anonymous. hacked my computer and made a blog <laughs> with all my These pictures. disgusting meatballs. <laughs> Literally, I had to own it. And yeah. it was so bad. I mean, it was so bad, but it was so worth it. Yeah. I feel like the first thing that people ask me on the Internet about becoming an influencer of any type. Yeah. is how did you get over what people thought about you? Yeah. And the thing is, you just have to like do it. I know. I mean, <laughs> I still struggle. Like sometimes I'll post stuff on Instagram and I'm mm-hmm. like way too many people are saying this. Just way too many people that know me because I like I don't know. I started doing this when I was like 24. Yeah. And so I'm like, there's just a lot of life before then. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of those people like <laughs> still like we like our mutuals on Instagram. And I'm just like, hey, guys. Sorry. <laughs> like and all this like randomly out of nowhere. Like I was yeah. a preschool teacher literally one day. The next day I'm like, hey, guys, here's at Kelsey's K60 for HelloFresh. <laughs> like it's just like, you know what I mean? And yes. so it's like so yes. weird. And so I still sometimes I'm like, what is everybody going to think about mm-hmm. this? Well, it's also the imposter syndrome thing. Yeah, I struggle with that pretty bad. But the thing is, I think you just have to decide. That's another th- question I get. How are you confident or how are you so sure of yourself? I'm like, right. well, here's the thing. You're going to have to live anyway. So like you might as well just decide to just kind of mind fuck yourself. Right. And just be totally in on what you're doing. Right. It's you true. have to. You do what have else to. are you going to do? It's true. Just sit there and do the same exact thing, but like <laughs> with a shitty attitude. <laughs> yeah, like you're know. still going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So you might as well just like embrace it. Yeah, be confident. It's true. Yeah. So I'm trying. We're trying. We are trying. Okay, so I have really been seeing a lot lately that it seems like everybody is like kind of quitting their jobs at the moment and turning their side hustle in to their day job. Or with the new year coming, I feel like people might be inspired to really go for it, you know, and try something new. And if you're kind of considering doing the same thing, the all-in-one commerce platform Shopify makes it easy to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll create an online store in your vibe, discover new customers, and grow the following that keeps them coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted so your business keeps growing. From an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify has got you. 
every step of the way. You guys have got this. Every minute, new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you will too. I feel like I am kind of the person that always has like new ideas and things that I want to start, but I never follow through because I get nervous and it seems difficult and impossible. But now it's never been easier to start and grow a business thanks to Shopify. So if you're feeling the same way, try it out. The simplicity of it all has truly encouraged me to step up and start. So sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash circle time, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash circle time to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash circle time. But that whole process of starting a blog and stuff yeah. in College Station helped me with that down yeah, the line. You know? For sure. So starting a podcast now. Like the idea that we can get on a mic and talk yeah. in, into it for 45 minutes to an hour. Right. And then put it out in the world like as if we have something to say, which no, hopefully it, you do. But like you're like, it's insane. No, it's totally insane. Like actually, <laughs> if I think about it for too long, like I do spiral. Yes. Yes. Like even like with like driving here, I'm like... Like, here we go. Oh, like, I listen to a meditation to prep for podcast episodes now. I'm like, I literally search performance meditation on Spotify. I should probably do that. Well, I just honestly I don't actually meditate because I'm driving. Right. But I'm like sitting there and I'm just like, okay, you're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Yeah. You're obviously here for a reason. Right. Like, I'm just trying to focus. Right. And I don't know when that's going to become like second nature. I know. I think about that too. And I've asked Cody about that. And he he's kind of like, it never like really goes away. It mm-hmm. just like, you just deal with it differently yeah well, and like, like you just get more just, used to it and it's the yeah, same thing just as saying. we were just saying yeah you kind of have to psych yourself out right and be like it's not that big of a deal and even like it's funny because like I last night we were flying home last night we were in Sacramento and so we were like on the plane and I was like I need to record my podcast episode and I'm like really nervous mm-hmm. and Cody was like why are you nervous and I was like I don't know I just like I don't know what to talk about and he was like it's literally 45 minutes <laughs> yeah. it's just 45 <laughs> minutes like you talk all the time yeah like you don't shut up so like it's 45 minutes you'll be fine and I was like Four five minutes. Yeah, it's just forty five okay. minutes. Yeah. I could do that, and that helped. That does help. That's but like fifteen. Like three simplifying minute TikToks. it. You know, I actually measure a lot you of think time in TikToks. TikToks. <laughs> Because Joe's know. like, can we watch five more TikToks? And I'm like, Joe, that literally could be nine minutes. Like, we need to go to sleep. That's, oh, that's ten minutes. Like, come yeah. On. He's like, okay, five more TikToks. I'm like, it's literally one in the morning. I don't even know how to limit myself. Yeah, I just until I fall asleep. Actually, you want to know something really bad that I've been doing? <laughs> I've been falling asleep <laughs> watching TikToks. Uh-huh. Listen to this. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> and I'm falling asleep while I'm watching them. So I'm like my mm-hmm. finger is relaxing. So I accidentally hold down on it and I'm I start sending people oh, God. random TikToks, like people like mutual people that I follow. Yes. But like I don't know a lot of them that <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> and I'm sending them like random like I sent someone like this girl, this random girl, uh-huh. maybe like maybe it had like 6000 likes on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she was just talking about like her breakup. And the girl <laughs> like the girl who I sent it to responded and was like, what question mark and I was like oh my I don't god remember this. like or like I kept sending like try guys the yes. try guys yeah. drama I yeah. kept sending those because I would like spiral and watch them before I fell asleep kept sending them to just random fucking oh. people have you ever commented no well, I just send know them it's true <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no beer. idea no I've now learned to put my phone down yes. right when I find myself falling asleep mm-hmm. the last one just like where's where I drew the line yeah, so yeah. I was like I gotta stop <laughs> That's so I, mean, I will watch TikToks with Joe and then I'll be like, Joe, I literally have to go to sleep. So then he'll turn around, literally go to the other side of the bed and touch me with like his foot. So we're still yeah, touching. That's beautiful. And then he'll like put a pillow over his head. So the, the, sh- the light's not shining like he's an actual addict. Oh, wow. Addict. I mean, good for him. TikTok for addict. Trying. I mean, so am I I'm just yeah. not doing anything about it. I'm fully in it. He's he's at least trying to be aware of me yeah you know yeah that's sweet with the light with the blocking of the lights actually really cute that is that is really cute and it's on full volume though so that's not really that helpful i watch all mine on silent because cody doesn't like this you watch all the tiktoks on silent when i'm sleeping oh my gosh that's a whole different and so then i'm getting i'm trying to guess what they're saying it's a whole game maybe that's why i can't fucking fall asleep because my brain doesn't stop working i'm watching literally well also your face is literally three inches from a phone yeah well it doesn't know i know (laughs) i know trust me you're about it from cody all the time (laughs) you need some like blue light lenses or something yeah i have some i'm not gonna sleep in them (laughs) (laughs) but you'll sleep holding your phone (laughs) (laughs) one one or the other yeah it's true I don't oh know. God. Okay. Are you ready? We have a game to play yeah. here. 
Yeah. I'm well, ready. we're doing an icebreaker, even though we've definitely already broken the ice. <laughs> yeah, but we're doing it's winter time now. Well, not technically. Yeah. December. Yeah. Yeah. I had to look it up. Winter starts in like end of December. OK, but whatever. It's Holiday Christmas season. time. You yeah. celebrate Christmas, right? Mm-hmm. OK, that's good because all these questions are about Christmas. Perfect. OK. First thing we're playing is a winter. Would you rather? OK. Ready? Mm-hmm. Would you rather make yourself a cup of hot apple cider or a cup of delicious hot chocolate? Hot chocolate. Yeah. Okay. With Kahlua in it. You know what? I saw <laughs> someone do that the other day. Did you post that on your story the other day? I don't know. Someone did. And I was like, why didn't I ever think about this? Boozy hot chocolate is the way. Really? Mm-hmm. I should try that. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's like a nice little like nightcap. Maybe I'll try it tonight. Mm-hmm. It's Monday. It. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. Monday. Perfect. Monday. <laughs> Monday. Hot chocolate. <laughs> perfect. Okay. Would you rather wear a wool jacket? while chilling at the beach mm-hmm. or a bikini when it's snowing. Am I sitting outside in the bikini, obviously? Yeah. Do I have shoes on? It doesn't say if you want. Okay. If you want. I would do bikini with snow boots because it's like a. Because it's like cute. Well, not even. It's just like cryotherapy. Oh. Also, I hate being hot. Okay. But what if it's like windy at the beach? Like I would probably wear a jacket at the beach. I'm known to wear jeans at the beach. So. Oh, my God. The thought of water and sand on denim. Oh my god! You think I get close enough to the water? <laughs> you know, know. jumping in know. in my jeans? No, I'm wearing jeans to the beach. I don't want to be near the water. What about sand in your denim? Well, you're so far back there. It's like the dust. Yeah, like it's just kind of like not okay. really. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess for if we're talking about like a substantial amount of time, I would say wool jacket at the beach. Right, you'll freeze. Yeah, and get frostbite. And yeah, you'll die. I'm actually really scared so. of frostbite. Me as well. Never had it, but me either. <laughs> I mean, I've lived in LA my entire life. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm scared of it because it seems like a myth. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather interact with Frosty the Snowman mm-hmm. or Rudolph? Rudolph. Okay. What would you ask him? I would just pet him. He gives me like dog energy. Okay. Like I bet he's cute. But like Frosty gives me like, oh wait, that's kind of creepy actually. I was going to say like Barney. Yeah. Frosty but like that's kind of creepy. He gives me like old man alcoholic vibes. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't oh know why. Oh my God. No. Just what I think about. <laughs> You're kind of right maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I don't like him. You know, Maybe like a cartoon I saw when I was little or something. You know, I didn't really think about that. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like leaning towards Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I think about it, like I actually really hate when people are dressed up as characters. Mm-hmm. I talked about this before, but like I just like I don't like. Is, I don't, there, is like, there a word for that? Like a fear? Like, you know, there's like. Like a phobia? Yeah. I don't know. I bet there is. Maybe. Sometimes I think it. if I put a name to things, like they'll become a lot more real. But mm-hmm. like if they, if I just say like I don't like when people are doing that, then I won't like think too much about it. Yeah, I have a fear of big things on or in the water. Like boats? very specific. Like if I see like a cruise ship, yeah, on the water, my skin starts to crawl. Like I literally need to like pass out or something. Like if you s- just see it, see it. If I just what if see you it? were on it? No. Would no, you ever no, get no. on it? No, I mean, someone paid me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, classic. <laughs> Maybe. Nothing scary no, then. No, it's fine. I'll do whatever. But I don't know. There's something also I've been like on boats where we're like boating next to one of them. Okay. Like not super close, but like yeah. close enough to where you can see how big it is. And right. I'm just like, I hate it. Oh, or if it's so under, specific. Like under the water. Like, like if you submarine. look down and like it's something huge is under the water. No, it doesn't have to be an animal. Like, really? Something like huge just like a big water. rock. Yeah. Or like a reef. Like one time we were supposed to go snorkeling and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Because I looked down and saw like the coral reef thing. And I was like, I'm literally going to, I'm going to have a panic attack. Forever has this been a thing? Yeah. Really? I hate them. I hate big boats or. That's. I don't really mind planes landing on water, but like a 737 landing on the water would really freak me out. Yeah. Well, it'd probably freak anyone out. (laughs) That's that's true. generally pretty terrifying, honestly. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. Okay. That's crazy mm-hmm. random. I haven't looked up that phobia because like like you were saying, it does make it more real. Yeah. So I'm sure that's a phobia though. I'm sure it is. Really specific. Maybe you should up. like that like a support group. Maybe I should get like a past life regression. Maybe I died on the Titanic. No, I actually have thought about doing something like that or just even getting like hypnotized and like mm-hmm. letting all of my traumas come out. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. I think it sounds a little dangerous. I think it's like a breeding grounds for like neuroses. Yeah, and like I'm okay. I'm f- like I've made it this <laughs> far, okay. right? Like I don't <laughs> yeah. need to start like really unpacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would like to know what I did in a past life, and I do believe in that stuff. Yeah, I believe in it with you know a grain of salt. Right, I believe in it. Same, possible. same. It's possible for yeah. sure. 
Okay. Well, hopefully you weren't on the Titanic. Well, it's fine because I'm here now. That's true. <laughs> That's <laughs> I was right. doing the math when the Titanic <laughs> yeah, happened but. as I said that. Okay. Would you rather live in an igloo or a gingerbread house? Gingerbread house. Me too. Cozy. But ants. I didn't think about that. But igloos are so cold. So cold. But imagine like little Kahlua and hot chocolate. Yeah. Laying in <laughs> the igloo. Now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that in a gingerbread house. The frosting would start to melt. No. Well, ha- well yeah. And Wait, the igloo would fucking melt but the, but more than so the cold. frosting <laughs> would so melt. It's cold on the outside, but it'll keep the igloo cold. True. I lived that went through my brain when you said it. Okay. <laughs> great. 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 Okay. Let's do two more. Would you rather go Christmas caroling or see the Nutcracker? See the Nutcracker. Me too. I fucking hate Christmas caroling. Oh, why? Come on. I have a phobia. What about the joy? Oh, of... what's this phobia now? <laughs> Phobia. <laughs> yeah, what's this one? I have a phobia of people Big all groups. singing at me. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's like musicals? I guess it's receiving Christmas carols that really stresses me out. Like a huge group of people looking at you while they're singing. It's like the happy birthday effect. Like misery. Yeah, I guess I've never been caroled at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, do you sing along? <laughs> no. Do you dance? Well, I just stood there like I didn't even know what to do. Did you like, know they were coming? <laughs> no. I they, couldn't prep. Did, no, sorry. Did they actually like knock on your door and yes. you answered the door? Yes, and I was little and Wait, I that's was so cool. Nobody this does big, that. And I was like, yeah. what? And they were singing with such force and vigor. Oh my God. Well, maybe you should try caroling and then you'll knock that phobia right out. I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. <laughs> we have what to if we did it for caroling? Vlogmas? <laughs> Where are we going to carol? <laughs> Just us two? Like the bird streets or wherever like the really rich people live in LA. Just us. like (laughs) Just the two of us. Like everybody just has gates. And we don't have to even announce what we're doing. We could just, as soon as they open the door, start the Christmas. We should go caroling. Look them dead in the eyeballs. I'm going to get you to face this fear. (gasps) Okay. I'm scared. Just us. As long as we have hot chocolate with Kahlua. Yeah. Then we'll be like, we'll be feeling like. Mm-hmm. ready to go it'll be hilarious but we have to be serious more we can bring joe and cody yeah we gotta introduce them we do have to introduce them <laughs> i'm actually i was thinking about that today i want to see what that dynamic would be joe gets along with everybody i feel like cody does too yeah and joe's also the easiest person to ever get along with like my friends get along with him better than they do with me yeah i feel like cody is very similar yeah very nice but you're similar you get along with everybody yeah but i'm like annoying and like difficult i have my moments where i well, when I'm blacked out, I'm the most annoying. So there's that. Then you must not have been blacked out when we met. Oh, <laughs> I was. You were not annoying. <laughs> Me too. No, but we had very similar like vibes. Yes. I feel like. I think we were talking to each other in the corner for like literally six hours. We and were. so we saved everyone else. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. That's, we didn't notice that we were being annoying because we were yeah, just babe. talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. But Joe wasn't there. And Joe mm-hmm. and Cody need to meet. We should go on a double date. We should. We need to have like a nice double dating couple here in, in LA, even though how we're much, leaving in how February. Much longer? Okay. Yeah. So Peyton's boyfriend plays baseball, baseball. <laughs> and <laughs> they're always be bouncing like the- around. Well, I didn't know if you were going to jump in, so I was just waiting. And then I was going to say MLB, and then I was like, oh, I don't know what to say. And so I just, baseball. Yeah. Peyton's boyfriend plays baseball. Mm-hmm. And for so they for his job. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Not like he doesn't just like head out to the park. I always say with for his, his work job buddies. Too, yeah. Well, it kind of does actually. He Him does. and his work buddies play baseball. They're his coworkers. Yeah, they are. That's sweet. It's so cute. It's a different kind of vibe. Right. But... So he professionally plays baseball, mm-hmm. which is really cool. It's very cool. And it's cool to see him do. And I think you have this too with Cody and obviously with he sees it with you too is like see someone in their element. Yes. Like when they're so good at something. Yeah. Yeah. And they get to do what they want to do with their lives. It's like a right. different energy. Yeah. It's it's awesome. It's nice. And it's nice to be around. It's nice to watch. It's yeah. It's hot. Yeah. To watch. Mm-hmm. But that also means him and I move a lot. And Right. We so move where together. have you lived? So we moved in together last December. We're okay. almost a year in. Okay. And we moved to Dallas together. Right. We were like, let's spend our off seasons in Dallas because I'm from Texas. Okay. We'll save some money. We'll build a house. It'll be great. So we did all the things. We ended up, the house wasn't ready for us before he left for spring training. Okay. So then I actually stayed in Dallas. He went to Palm Beach, Florida. Got it. And then I met him in D.C. in June. And then we lived in D.C. from June to October. Okay. And then we moved How here. How was that? It was good. I love D.C. Okay. I'm like a big D.C. lover. Okay. Nice. Really hot, really humid. Yeah. I love it because I'm from Texas. It's right. similar. Right. And then we were supposed to move to Dallas for the off season. We had the house ready. Right. And he had to get surgery 
in the summer. So he literally came home from work one day and was like, by the way, I have to do off season in LA and we're selling the Dallas house. And I was just like, oh, no. oh my God. At first I was sad because we had spent so much time on this house, mm-hmm. but he sold the house and then we moved here and honestly it couldn't have worked out better. But we're already leaving in February and we don't know where we're going yet. We'll probably find out in like late this month or January. And that depends on where he's going to be playing. playing. So we have no idea. So where are you going to do your off seasons? Probably here. Okay. I'm trying to convince him to buy a house here. Okay. Which would be ideal. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. We'll have to show him y'all's place because we were just with one of his friends who plays as well, like last weekend. Okay. And he bought a house in Venice that kind of reminds me of y'all's okay. place from what I remember. Yeah. Um, Like a similar layout. Like I like that kind of like open kind of modern vibe. Yeah. So anyway, I'm now looking all over. Well, let's invite him over. Yeah. He has to see it. Okay. We're convincing him one by one to do yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I'll Sounds convince good. him. And I like y'all's area better because I don't want to live on the west side. I'm on the west side. You are? Venice is the west side. I was blackout when he came to your house. I had no idea you lived in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we do. I low-key thought you were in like, in like West West Hollywood. <laughs> no. God, that was a long Uber for you from Santa Monica Seriously. To, to my place. <laughs> no, we're in, we're in Venice. So that's why all the houses are so freaking nice. I feel like they're very similar over there. There's so many that are similar vibes to y'all's because theirs looked so similar. Like really? The front and everything did too. What if it was mine? What if it was yours? <laughs> what if it was in your house? <laughs> no, that's crazy. But I don't know that we'll be in Venice forever, mm-hmm. but we'll be in LA. Yeah. He has PT and like all this training is in Westwood. Okay. So that's why I like where like we live Brentwood. now. Yeah. Okay. We live to Brentwood. Right now we're in Beverly Hills and I feel like super bougie saying that, but it's literally the best place I've ever lived in LA because I can walk everywhere. Yeah. Which I love. I love walking. Wow. So you, you've you been all over the place. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's been an interesting situation. Yeah. But when I was younger, my dad was in the Air Force. Yeah. And we moved, not as much as we do now, but like every two years. Right. At the beginning. So I learned the tricks. Did that like scare you when you first started dating Joe? No. How did you feel? Was it exciting? Well, when I first started dating him, it was 2020. He took the season off. Okay. Because a lot of people were getting injured and yeah. stuff. So yeah. we had this like really unique experience of being able to like actually spend time together yeah because the season's very intense right it's gone every single day yeah either at the field or like gone gone like on the road so anyway it was a whole year of us just like he was in LA all the time I was up in San Fran because he's from Oakland so I'd go to San Fran to see him and then it was like the next year I got to see him actually playing wow but we were long distance for a year and a half that's wild yeah was it hard no it was the best thing ever Oh, okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, look at that. That's probably how you know that you're like with the right person. Yeah. Too. And I also like I get freaked out with relationships. Right. I never really had a serious boyfriend before him. So I think I get overwhelmed. And if it was like someone that was available to me all the time and like wanted to hang out all the time, I would have felt like I was getting love bombed. Right. Which I learned what that was like probably four months into my relationship with Joe. And okay. I like freaked out. And I texted <laughs> my friend Kelsey. I was like, I think I'm getting love bombed. And Kelsey was like, first of all, that happens like when you first right. meet somebody. <laughs> first of all, it's been four months. Yeah. yeah. She's like, he just, and we're already dating. I think he just likes you. <laughs> it's like, like, there's no fucking oh way this God. guy's love bombing me. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? <laughs> and so I was just like very... I don't know. I wasn't into the relationship thing. I never saw myself being in one either. So I think it was good because I saw him like once a month, but for like a week. Yeah. Yeah. But that's also an unrealistic way to like actually date someone. So that's why I was like, we need to live together for a little while. Yeah. To see if it's real. Right. Like, anyone, I mean, not anyone, but anyone could like go have fun for a week, not in real life. Like right. my work no, would be totally. happening. Like it was just a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But yeah, just, we, now we've been living together for a year. Okay. And it's very different, but I like it. In a good way? Yeah. Nice. I feel like I'm like, it's almost like bordering on codependent. I've gone from one side yeah. of the spectrum to like now. But it's like a good, it's like a good form of codependency, yeah, I feel like. It is. I also think for me, codependency is like still very independent. Right. But like today I saw him and he was like, where, I was like on my way here and he's like, where are you going? And I'm like, nowhere, bye. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Stop asking these goddamn <laughs> Why questions, you Joe. <laughs> I'll tell you at the end of the day. Right. <laughs> okay. See you later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just more of learning how to like be on the same team as someone, yeah, but yeah. like still being able to like do live your own life. Yeah. And being here has been helpful for that because like living in Dallas, living in DC, we're there for his work really. Right. So like it was just a different vibe. And right. now like I have my life and my friends yeah. and my own thing. Yeah. And like you have this and yes. like you can do stuff for your work. I can leave the more, house. Right. Which right. I realize makes him also more attracted to me. 
Yeah. Because he's like, oh my God, you're so busy. You're so cool. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you later. Boss babe. <laughs> She's a girl boss. <laughs> Joe calls me that sometimes because he knows I hate it. That's girl boss. sweet. I Ooh. mean, what do you never call me a girl boss? Boss babe. We are kind of boss babes. Boss Everyone's babes. a boss babe if you just believe. Mm-hmm. Well, it comes back to the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Which we have to, you know, remind ourselves you just, to do. I mean, we're doing our meditations in the car. Right, right, right. I need to start. No, that's a key. I'm telling you it's a key to my life. I like her to be like, okay. Even like before I go out, I have to be like, okay, Peyton. You're, you're so gonna funny. You're going to be normal. You're so social. <laughs> People Everybody loves you. like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're magnetic. Yeah, yeah. That's, I literally am doing my makeup listening to that. Oh. This is new, by the way. Like as of like the last two weeks. But and it's you know been what? helping. Yeah. I went out the other night. Crushed it. Crushed it. People oh my God. loved me. They were coming to Joe being like, <laughs> we love your girlfriend to the point where I was like, this is weird. Oh behavior. my God. You manifested it. I manifested it. So get on it, guys. I literally just went on Spotify, searched performance meditation or like magnetic meditation. Oh my I'm just God. doing my makeup. And yeah. It works. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'll try that. And I think I pretty much killed it today. So you're crushing it so far. Killing it. Yeah. <laughs> doing a great job. Manifested this too. Yeah. We manifest everything. Well, I need to start. You should. I'll well. send you some podcasts. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Marsh, can we do a voicemail? Voice We're going to do, yeah. So we do story time here. Okay. And basically people call in and give us situations okay. or stuff they need advice on, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And we try to help. Yes. Hi, Kelsey. First of all, I love the podcast. And I know everybody says that, but... <laughs> Literally, Honestly, like I need to Thursday, hear it. I'm <laughs> so excited to listen to the new episode. Like Thursday is now my favorite day of the week Aww. because of that. That's so nice. please don't stop. I love it. But yeah, my thing that I would like advice on is just like kind of what to do when you're growing apart from friends that you didn't think you would grow apart from so quickly. Like, yeah, I just started my last year of college, which is also pretty scary to, like, be graduating soon. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I thought I would have, like, a more solid friend group by this time. And I've just kind of been, like, alone, which I love my alone time. I love being my own bestie. But, yeah, it's been kind of lonely. And some advice on that would be pretty cool. So, yeah. Thank you. Love the podcast. Bye. Okay, this is a good question. That is a good question. That's what we both were literally were like. (laughs) (laughs) Classic. Classic. Okay, first of all, I love that you said that you love being alone and being your own bestie because Mm -hmm. I feel like that is a really hard thing to learn. Mm -hmm. And so like the fact that you're already like in that state of mind is great. And you're like, you know who you are is a wonderful thing. I also think growing apart from friends is a lot more common Mm -hmm. than you realize it is because I think people like to like show off their friendships and so you just think that everybody like just has so many friends all the time but like especially going through college you're learning so much about yourself and everybody is trying to figure it out that like it's pretty natural for you to kind of like have ebbs and flows in your friendships and your relationships and I feel like it's okay Mm -hmm. that this is happening i think it's healthy i do too like you're not just being surrounded by people who aren't supposed to be with you yeah i think like the loneliest i've ever been is with a bunch of people that i'm like i shouldn't be around these people anymore and my friends have changed drastically yeah since since college even my college friends i you know i moved out here yeah and then i had like my going out friends right and like people come to LA and leave LA all the time. So yeah. that group, like there were some like core people, but then, you know, a lot of the time my life with them didn't exist outside of Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right. or like on, going on trips or something. And then since I met Joe and I'm in this new stage of my life, I feel like I have totally had a whole like friend redo kind of like yeah. I've reconnected with old friends from college that are still like my best friends, like core people. Right. And then here in LA, I have friends. But it's a, it was weird to like not be friends when I moved back with my friends I've had before. Yeah. So I know the feeling of like the feeling of being lonely is like. For sure. A hundred percent get it. And I, I'm 28. And yeah. I still like have a little bit of that residual feeling. Yeah. But I think at different points of your life, I would say the exiting of college mm-hmm. is like such a huge moment in your life. For like sure. it's only natural that you 
will now be gravitating towards different people. Yes. I actually talked about this in the podcast I did today, but Mm -hmm. there are so many times where you think that like, oh, I'm I'm almost done with college. I should have met my lifelong best friends by now. And Mm -hmm. it's like you don't realize like how much more life that you're going to live and how much more you're going to grow. And you're about to like embark on a whole nother part of your life and like you're going to meet so many other people like I met the people that I'm closest to now when Mm -hmm. I was like a full 24 25 yes and I found like some of the best friendships I've ever had as more of an adult than Mm -hmm. I did I have like one good friend from college Emma who you met yes but she's like but like other than that like I'm friends with people from college but Mm -hmm. we're not best friends I have one friend like that as well yeah and so it's like it's then that's okay. Mm -hmm. And like there have been people who I was really close with in college, didn't think we would not be friends, kind of grew apart and then found each other again like later in life. And like it's Mm -hmm. a different kind of relationship, but like it's still something. Yeah. And I just think that there's like so much growing and changing that's happening that like nothing is permanent and like you're going to find so much more. Mm -hmm. I also think that like you need to focus on bringing in people in your life who you get like inspired by or yeah. make you feel good about yourself yes and I think growing away from friends there's a huge component to it that's just being honest with yourself yeah if you aren't honest with yourself you're not going to grow away from anyone because totally. it's not comfortable but once you get really honest with yourself and you venture into this like uncomfortable zone of kind of feeling alone because you're growing apart from people that are not for you anymore yeah it is always going to be sad. Like, it's like a breakup. Oh, yeah. It's going to be sad. Like, the friends that I've lost, like, that's, I've felt more sad about that than I have yes. pretty much any other breakup I've Same. Had. Yeah. Even though I knew it was the right thing. Totally. And I knew it wasn't, th- those people were not bringing me into the space that I needed to be in. Absolutely. For the next version of myself. But it still hurts, but you have to, like, kind of go through that hurt. And right. And kind of just try to bring in people who are more like you or can match your current energy. Yeah. And it, that kind of stuff, happens for a reason Mm -hmm. and like when certain friendships kind of like fizzled out I would think back on a memory that like I maybe didn't think anything of at the time Mm -hmm. and then I'd be like she wasn't really being a good friend in that moment or like I'll tell like someone a story and I'm like and then my friend blah 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 and they're like why'd your friend do that I'm like actually I don't really know that happens to me so often right like why was I just hanging out with someone who was like doing and I didn't even think anything of it well it's like a shitty guy yeah you're like well he just did this and that and the other thing your friends are like (laughs) yeah what (laughs) yeah you're like oh but i love him <laughs> right but he's like super sweet no no same thing with friends yeah same thing it's with the friends. same thing you're going to grow and change so much it seems scary because like when college is coming to an end it seems like your life is coming to an end yeah. and like anything fun that you ever do is over mm-hmm. but, but it's like the start it's the start of like everything good yeah oh i love it i'm excited for you i'm excited for you too it's gonna be totally fine Hey Kelsey, it's Stacy. First off, I want to say that I love your channel and your podcast. I've been watching you for a very long time. And now that you have this podcast, it's just like the advice you've given so far has been very helpful. But basically, I'm in high school and I have a problem with getting attached to guys and getting really close to guys and having very strong feelings for them. And then telling them how I feel and them just being like, oh, I thought we were just friends. And then I lose not only someone I really liked, but a really close friend. And right now I have I guess a crush. I have a really big like liking towards this guy and I have strong feelings for him. And I don't know how to tell like if he just wants to be friends or what, you know, it's, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting mixed signals. I was just wondering if you had any advice on how to tell if someone just wants to be your friend or if they want to be something more. So yeah, thanks. Okay. Oof. Okay. First of all, I like good for you for telling people how you feel about them. Like I, love that yeah if I had just like a inkling of that when I was in high school I probably wouldn't have been a virgin until I was 20 you know what I mean (laughs) but like it's fine Mm -hmm. but like you that's so amazing Mm -hmm. I really don't want you to like lose that confidence and honesty yes and like courage right wow I like I really I think that's amazing and I feel like it probably feels discouraging when you're honest with someone about how you feel about them and they have led you to believe that they feel the same way as Mm -hmm. probably these boys are doing. Mm -hmm. But it's not on you that they're saying like, what? Like, I just want to be friends. It's probably terrifying that like a confident, cool girl is coming up to them and telling them that she likes them. Mm -hmm. I think that in high school, a lot of people are giving mixed signals. Well, that's what I was about to say. Like, I, I would say mostly I can speak to like, 
men in college right not even men boys in college and then men outside of college like Mm -hmm. I know that there's like a certain way that men in my life have acted to me but I Joe's my first real boyfriend and I was 26 when I met him right so I was like much I didn't kiss a boy till I was 18 like I was in high school I was not same I was terrified yeah me too terrified so I think in high school all the things that I would say, the advice I would give, I don't think it applies to high school boys. Right. I know. You know? And that's, I mean, I think that like w- all you can really control is how you handle yourself in these situations. And if you have a crush on someone, you don't have to like call them and be like, hey, I'm in love with you. Like, you know what I mean? But like, mm-hmm. if you have a crush on someone, like, why don't you see what it's like when the two of you hang out? Maybe like, invite him to go to the movies mm-hmm. or to do something do people go to the movies still i have no idea what they do okay <laughs> invite him to like go invite him to hang out yeah uh, whatever way <laughs> and like see just see like how the two of you get along mm-hmm. and like how because i feel like i've had crushes on boys i remember i had a crush on a boy in high school and i invited him over and we hung out for more than like 10 minutes and yeah, i was yeah. like what the heck is going on like yes. you gotta get out of my house so hang out with him, see if the crush is still there. And if it is, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with telling people how you feel about them. I mean, if you feel comfortable doing that, I think that that's, a, I, again, we both said we wish we were more that way. Yes. You're kind of like leaving it all out there. You're doing your absolute best in the situation you're being put in. And I also like that you say like you kind of have had feelings for like a number of different guys like this because yeah. when I was younger I was like very standoffish and like very guarded and my best friend fell in love with absolutely everyone okay and we recently went on a trip together and she's still very much like that and it's it's caused her some like she needs to rate it in now yeah but she's like I just can find something I love about everybody like yeah. she's just so loving and when I was younger I was like oh like why are you doing that so much right. but now I like look at her and I'm like oh I'm a little bit jealous that yeah. like you're so open and you're it's so great willing. To be open like that. Yeah. yeah. And you're so, I don't know, accepting of people and just yeah. like compassionate that you can find like love in a bunch of different right. types of people at For least. For sure. So anyway, I think that that's like really cool. I just wanted to note that. It is really cool. And I also just think like you'll never know unless you try. Mm-hmm. And like you might as well try. And like I said before, more times than not, especially in high school, like when you're telling a boy that you like them, their response has nothing to do with you. Honestly, not even in high school. Mm-hmm. In like forever. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Like <laughs> their response to you being honest and open and confident and upfront mm-hmm. has nothing to do with you. No. It is so like, it's scary to see someone act that way mm-hmm. if you're not sure of yourself. And I think like, these guys probably aren't 100% sure of themselves. And so no. they see that and they get scared. But I think it's amazing that you're doing this. And why don't you hang out with this boy you have a crush on? And if you want to tell him that you're kind of into him, you have a little crush on him. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I would do it too. I mean, I wouldn't meet when I was younger. wouldn't do it. Right. But, but I, if I was looking back on my life now and I was yeah. in your shoes, I'd be like, Peyton, do it. There, there are times when I think about high school me having a crush on someone mm-hmm. and like how different things could have gone if I just had told them that I had a crush on um, them. I had the biggest crush on this guy hugest okay like it was well known yeah and we would like text all the time yeah and everyone knew that he kind of liked me too but like he was a little bit older than me okay I would see him in the hallway at school and when I tell you I would turn around Mm -hmm. and sprint the other direction (laughs) run that's fine and people are like Peyton he can see you because it's not in the hallway (laughs) I'm still like I don't even care as long as I can't see him seeing me we're the only two people in the hallway I I literally yeah I would just be panic stricken. Yeah. So again, the fact that you're like, hey, by the way, like telling any feelings it's so to people. Cool. Bold. It's so cool. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Me that's too. Good. And you're gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. Let us know how it goes. Yeah. I'm curious. Report back. Okay. And there are stories. The end. The end of story I time. I like the voiceover. I love it too. Or voicemails. Whatever. It's called? just it, it's nice to hear people like explain mm-hmm. from their actual yes. like in their actual words and not like try yeah. to write it down or something because I feel like it's you get more like emotion that way. and also you like don't have to listen to your own voice yeah for the whole time this is true it breaks it up a little bit yeah for sure good, good ideas good do ideas. it good do ideas. it <laughs> okay last but not least here on circle time it's our journal time okay so I find questions for like elementary school kids okay and <laughs> we answer them at random okay. I'm like on the edge of my seat. I like I didn't even write these myself. I'm like, oh my God, what's it going to (laughs) be? 
Okay, share what your home is like on Christmas morning. Give it to us. So, I mean, so my family celebrates on Christmas Eve. Okay. We do Christmas Eve night. Okay, so that's your like tradition? Yeah. Okay. And then we do Christmas morning, we wake up and do stockings. Nice. My little brother's 17, so he's like kind of like, he's still young. Yeah. And like, we'll probably still do stockings forever. But we do stockings. I usually wake up really late. So it's like everyone already did their stocking. Oh, that you don't wait? No. Oh. Well, they don't wait. Yeah. Because I'm like, Sorry. who knows they, yeah. how when I'm going to be up. Right. So I get up. Everyone sits there and films me. I'm 28 <laughs> years old. I'm putting my stocking. Me too. <laughs> Duh. And it's the best. We, I'd be right. pissed if they didn't. <laughs> and usually it's like literally like socks and then like like an envelope with some kind of money in it or yeah, something. Yeah, like a gift card. Yeah. And I I'm like, I'm glad everyone videoed this. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we... Just sit there. Well, usually, like, sometimes we'll go see a movie or something, like, yeah. midday. Okay. But, yeah. That's our morning. So, super Christmas chill. Eve, mm-hmm. what do you do? My grandparents come over. Okay. My best friends. Like, they're literally my best friends in life. And we open our gifts. Yeah. And we have some kind of Christmas feast. We usually do, I mean, I grew up on, like, fast food, fast food. Okay. So, we'll usually do, like, there's a place called Rosa's in Texas that's, like, a Mexican restaurant. Okay. And we'll have it, like, literally catered to the house. Oh, that's fun. Or Popeye's. Nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Love so this. Good. Or if my dad's mom is over, she's, like, this little four foot eleven Sicilian woman. Okay. She'll make lasagna or, like, Italian sausage. Nice. So, lots of food and just, like, gifts and Hanging out. Yeah. That's great. It's so fun. It's Love warm, it. cozy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are you? I have similar similar vibes. Mm-hmm. We usually go to eat on Christmas Eve, like go to a restaurant. Ooh, I like that. My grandma, when she was alive, we would like she wanted us to all go to church. Mm-hmm. So we would go to church with her. Yeah, yeah. And now I think like it was COVID and so we didn't, but I think we probably still will, even mm-hmm. though she's not around now, just because it's for like tradition. the tradition of yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's looking somewhere. Yeah. I know she is. <laughs> so we do that and then Christmas Day, similar, mm-hmm. except like if they opened a single gift without me present, I would be pissed. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah duh. No. like my brother like waits for me to wake up. He'll like text me like, are you awake yet? And I'm oh like, my oh my God. Like, Here I am. That's so cute. And then we like go, we open stockings, we open yeah. presents and we That's just family. hang out. But we do have Italian food on Christmas. Yeah. We have like homemade lasagna and like oh, the best antipasta and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So good. How many siblings do you have? Just a brother. Okay. What about you? I have a brother and a sister. Okay. My sister's 25. Nice. We just had a baby. Oh my God. And I have a niece. <gasps> That's exciting. It's so exciting. I I haven't seen her yet because she went into labor early and then like was in the NICU because she was so small. Oh my God. How's she doing? She's healthy totally, okay. but like she was just so tiny. tiny. And so they're finally home. So I'm going to go see them in two weeks. That is so exciting. She's so small. Oh my God. What's her name? <laughs> Reese. Aww. It's a cute name. That is a really I also have baby fever. Like I straight up like wanted to snatch a baby out of a stroller yesterday. I like yeah. saw it and I was like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I kind of have baby fever Love as them. well. So Same. like once I see one that's related to me. Yeah. I'm like. Oh, I'm so excited oh for you. God, I'm so I'm so pumped. It's the best. Are you going to bring your like little clothes? Yeah. I can't wait to like just. Yes. Buy I, I want, baby like, clothes. Christmas. Well, she's right now. She's only like six pounds. Yeah, she's teeny. So I'm waiting. Okay. But. A Christmas, like a cute Christmas outfit. Well, my brother. So my brother was born when I was 12. Okay. And my I, mom and my uncle are 12 years old. Yeah. Okay. It's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. And my dad was always gone. So I was like the alternate parent. Right. And I would dress Brooks up in like Build-A-Bear costumes. <laughs> <laughs> and this poor so, kid. So similar vibes. Yeah. I'm going to do with my own <laughs> yeah. kid too. Joe's going to come home and I'm going to be like, do you like this setup? And it's going to be like, my child. <laughs> no, I, I can see myself doing the <laughs> yeah. same thing. Yeah. Just for jokes. Yeah. It'll be fun. <laughs> for laughs. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i can't wait for that honestly okay do you want to do one more yeah what is better christmas or your birthday oh uh, which one so my birthday is on the 30th which is right after christmas oh so it's kind of like they're both the same they, time they are i like my birthday better because i always had this tradition with myself here in la okay. of course because i love to be by myself right i would take myself out to lunch i would just do a whole day of doing exactly what i wanted to do and yeah. very rarely did that involve anyone else okay so i would just like go to the ivy and like take myself on a little That's like lunch. and it was so fun like christmas i love but there's so much chaos yeah that comes with it and i think i prefer my birthday okay for that reason yeah that makes sense yeah what are you gonna do for your birthday this year I have no idea. I think we're going to be here. So I actually might just do my thing. But now I spend it with Joe. Right. 
because that's like we we'll just make him to do, do whatever you want to do yeah well i just do i mean we already do whatever <laughs> <laughs> every day is your birthday <laughs> yeah. i'm literally like let's go to a date this week wednesday sounds good figure it out <laughs> it's like okay okay <laughs> he gives you a rest and you're like i actually already booked yeah. the ivy <laughs> yeah already done <laughs> thank you though cute cute decision cute idea yeah <laughs> poor joe what He's, about you i think i like christmas better yeah i don't know actually because i you do like to be with your family and do i the do things. like to do the things but i also like i like my birthday because i get to like be like we're watching this movie and mm-hmm. we're eating here like <laughs> I'm I the boss love that yeah. shit and I eat it up but like on Christmas it's like the whole world doesn't have to stop for your birthday yeah, yeah. you know what I mean mm-hmm. like it's really like it's a celebration like yeah. with you yeah you know I think that's why I like it and th- it makes me sad yeah like yeah. something about it like is like hello <laughs> does anybody know it's my birthday <laughs> sometimes I get like what about my birthday Anyone? but like it sometimes it's on a Monday and like people mm-hmm. like have shit they need to do you know what I yes. mean and so it's like you can't always like celebrate mm-hmm. but like with Christmas it's like the whole world kind of like stops for the holidays yeah and you're and all it's doing just, it together everybody is doing it and like everybody is doing something for the holidays yeah. there is a magic to it there's there is and yeah. I think I just I just like what's in the air yeah you know whereas sometimes it. your birthday is just any other day mm-hmm See, that's what I like about it. Mm-hmm. I like sitting somewhere and like no one knows it's my birthday. And no one's going to sing me happy birthday. Oh, see, you know? no. For me, I'm like, hello. <laughs> like I had to go to a wedding on my birthday this year. And like it was funny because if someone like actually started to talk to me about it, I'd be like, don't bring out my birthday. It's like yeah. these people's wedding. Yeah, yeah. But like in the back of my mind, I was like, this person's talking to me and they don't even know it's my birthday. <laughs> It's like kind of so weird. weird. It's so weird how they didn't know that. Kind of weird that they didn't sing to you me. just have to mention it. <laughs> in well, today's actually my birthday, so... <laughs> crazy cool <laughs> no i know i i need to work on that. <laughs> like yeah no like for my 30th next year i can't mm-hmm. be like crying if someone doesn't wish well, me that's birthday. a big one yeah that's a big one yeah but that'll be fun yeah a fun big one. i'll probably have like a party or something you should come yeah okay well, my, maybe i'll show up there <laughs> <laughs> well i'm turning 29 in december right. which month it's yeah. december and then so yeah next year will be my 30th as well the very end of the year oh my god Killing our birthdays it. are pretty close mine was what a couple years? months ago Oh, yeah. September. Yeah. That's how. So Joe's like eight months older than me or something. Okay. So he's about to turn 30. So yeah. I'm ready. I'm yeah. Ready to do a real big Yeah. Thing. You got to do something. It'll be fun. I can't wait. I'll be there. Yeah. You'll be there <laughs> wherever we well, are. Joe and Cody are going to be like best friends by that point. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be in West Palm Beach or we'll be in Scottsdale, Arizona. I love Scottsdale. If I just had like my bachelor join. party there. I saw that. It was so fun. I don't. I mean, I think we'll probably end up in Scottsdale based on the teams that I feel like have mentioned him before. Okay. You know what? Um, it, it was seriously beautiful like the neighborhood yeah. that we stayed in mm-hmm. we were all like on zillow yeah yeah the whole time checking it out yeah i so my best friend from la that i've had in la moved to scottsdale recently oh so that would be like an added little bonus oh, that'd be nice you know okay i have a friend there yeah yeah we'll be around <laughs> you'll be close i'll be close okay joe's big birthday joe's big <laughs> birthday know. bash with yet. his best friend cody <laughs> yeah can't I'm wait dead, i'm dead well thank you so much for coming of on of course thank this you for so having fun. me it was fun and i'll see you next time <laughs> see you later <laughs> okay bye <laughs> bye guys thank you for bye. listening love you <laughs> bye Please note that this episode may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products and services. Individuals on the show may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to in this episode.